good day uh, the next topic is uh, next lecture is uh, lecture number 5 in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss about the fundamentals of metal rolling especially the analysis of the flat rolling process okay so here uh, in a rolling process uh, there is a variation in the or distribution in the velocity distribution of the pressure and uh, what is the relation between the friction and the rolling force so all these uh, parameters or the characteristics of the rolling process will uh, will uh, analyze in this lecture okay so for that we have some fun uh, assumptions so these are the assumptions which is used for the analysis of the rolling process the first assumption is the arc of contact between the roll and the metal is a part of a circle okay so actually the arc of contact see this uh, in this case here in this case this is the arc of contact okay actually this is not a exactly a circle but we assume that this arc of contact between the roller and the workpiece is a circle it is a circle and second one is the coefficient of friction mu is a constant in theory but in reality mu vary along the arc of contact it is dependent upon the temperature it is dependent upon the uh, sliding motion between the uh, workpiece and the roller this mu value may vary but we consider throughout our problem in this uh, between this arc of contact this uh, mu value is a constant value second one is metal is considered to deform plastically uh, during the rolling process actually when we roll a material when we roll a material using um, um, when it pass through the gap of the rollers actually there are two types of deformation when we draw a stress strain diagram for example this much a bond of stress i am applied correspondingly the total strain is this much this much is the total strain out of the total strain some amount of strain some amount of strain will be elastic strain this is called elastic strain and remaining amount of strain is only the plastic strain epsilon 2 okay so out of total strain on our out of total deformation very small amount will be a elastic deformation and remaining the huge part will be a plastic deformation okay but in our analysis we ne, ne, this epsilon 1 is a very negligible quantity so we are not considering this epsilon 1 we consider the whole deformation is a plastic deformation so there will be a small elastic deformation but uh, major part is the plastic deformation so here in this assumption we consider only plastic deformation we neglect any elastic deformation in the metal rolling process the volume of the metal is constant before and after rolling in practical the volume might uh, decrease as a small bit due to the close up of force okay so we are taking a material here uh, as an input input we have a uh, this is my input uh, raw material it has a particular s value it has a particular uh, thickness value length value okay so the volume is equal to v into w into l that is the volume of the initial workpiece and after rolling process we got this material final material we got this final material with a this much amount of length okay this is the uh, thickness reduced thickness so we can give s1 l1 and the w is not changed w is same okay so the volume is equal to final final product volume is equal to w into uh, here h this is not h h h into w into l is the initial volume the final volume is equal to w into l1 into h1 okay so there is no change in volume then we can say this v0 and v1 are same v0 and v1 are same because during the volume um, rolling process there is no removal of material we entirely we change the shape of the material deform the material there is no removal of the material but in the initial workpiece there will be some pores and cavities in the workpiece okay after the rolling process what happened this um, uh, pores and cavities will close up so it will reduce some very low amount volume reduction will be there 
after the rolling process. But we consider the volume initial and the after rolling process is same. Okay. So there will be a very negligible volume change during the rolling process. It's not because of the removal of the material during the rolling process, but it is due to the close up of pores and cracks during the rolling process. Okay. Then the next one is the velocity of the roller is assumed to be constant. During the rolling process, it is rotating at a particular RPM. This uh, roller is rotating with a particular RPM. Okay. But when rolling is proceeding, because of the friction, there may be some variation in the RPM of the roller. This RPM of the roller is not constant. It may be due to some um, uh, play between the um, um, uh, connecting member during the power transmission. There may be some uh, RPM variation or maybe due to the friction between the workpiece and the uh, uh, roller. But we consider throughout the analysis, the RPM of the roller is constant. RPM of the roller or the surface corresponding to the RPM, we, this roller will have a surface velocity that is R roller, surface velocity that is RR is a constant. We consider that as a constant. The metal only extends in the rolling direction and no extension in the width direction. This is very important. Last class I already explained that here in this, this is the initial workpiece. It has a width of W. Okay. After rolling process also, the final product, final product width is not changed. Okay. It, the final product length is changed from L, L to L1. Uh, the thickness is changed from H to S1. Okay. The thickness is reduced. Length is increased. But there is no change in the width direction. What is the reason for that? What is the reason? The no change in the width direction. Hmm? Length of contact is highest oh. in width direction, so friction will. Oh. Yes, friction will resist the deformation in the width direction. We can see in this figure. This is the width in the width of this uh, workpiece after rolling the WF. So W zero equal to WF. There is no change in the width. Okay. What is the reason? When when there is any width directional change, dimension change in the width direction, the material has to flow in this direction. Okay, the material has to flow in this direction. Then only we got a increase in the width corresponding to reduction in the thickness. But what, what is the problem? During the rolling process, the, the contact between the roller, contact between the roller and the width direction is very uh, large length compared to other dimensions. Compared to length and the thickness dimension, the contact between the roller and the length of contact between the roller and the workpiece is higher so the uh, since the contact is very higher the friction between the roller in that direction and the workpiece is very higher so this friction will not allow the material flow in the width direction so we can say the width in the width direction the amount of deformation is very negligible that means there is no change in the width during the rolling process okay so that is also important. Uh, actually, there, there, there is some deformation. There is a deformation in the width direction. But we are not considering yeah, because... See this. When we consider a roller here. See this. This is a roller in the top roller. Similarly, we have a bottom roller also. Okay. So here we can see this is the surface of contact between the length of contact between the roller and the workpiece. Okay, roller under workpiece. So this much amount of contact will develop between next you do. Sure. So this this much amount of contact will develop between next you do. This is my roller. This is my roller and this is my uh, workpiece. Okay. So in this, see this this area. This area is say the length of contact in this area is very com large compared to any other area. Because in any other area, there is no such contact between the roller and the workpiece. The main contact is in between roller and the workpiece in the width direction. In the width direction. So, in width direction, if there, there is any contact, then the friction is a big factor there. Okay. The friction resists the movement in that direction. Okay. So, the metal flow in, the, in that direction will resist by the friction. Thereby, there will not be any change in 
dimension or change in uh, uh, dimension in the width direction. So, W0 is equal to WF. Okay. Where a figure? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So, that is uh, another important assumption. The uh, extension within the width direction is negligible. The cross section area remain, um, area normal to the rolling direction is not distorted. There is no change in the cross section area. Initial cross section area, if it is a rectangular cross section area, for example, this is a rectangular cross section area initially. Okay. So, the final product also will have a rectangular cross section area. Maybe the width, uh, maybe the length and, um, sorry, in the cross section, um, the thickness and uh, uh, width may change, but initially, if you if have a rectangle cross section area, final also will, will have rectangle cross section area. Maybe the dimension will change, but there is no distortion in the cross section area of the uh, final product. If we multiply W and uh, H, W and H, and here W into HP, the cross section area will change, but the uh, shape of the cross section area will not change. Okay, that is also another assumption during the rolling process. So next we are going to study the mechanics of flat rolling. What is the flat? What is the difference between flat rolling and, uh, and the, there are different types of rolling are there. And we can produce different structure components uh, with a different uh, I session. We can make this type of I session using rolling process. Okay, H session. Different types of rolling rolled product can be made using rolling process. But here we are only limiting our analysis for a flat rolling. This is an example for flat rolling. See, see here, here the surface is a flat surface. Okay, the surface is flat. So we consider only flat rolling for the analysis. So that is why this heading, the mechanics of flat rolling. Okay. So for the analysis, this is the um, um, the top roller is removed here in this picture. Here in this picture, the top roller is removed, and this is the variation of the workpiece during the rolling process during the rolling process okay so next year um, we are going to study about that mm. so the flat rolling is the most basic form of rolling with the starting and the ending material how rectangular cross section there is no change in the cross section but in the remaining um, rolling process for example if you want to make a uh, i session i session is the output product product from a rolling process then we uh, feed uh, rectangular cross section raw material into the rolling process and the output product will be I session or C session or S session etc. Okay, there is a change in cross session. But in case of flat rolling process, we are considering only flat rolling process for the analysis. Here in this analysis, we consider that uh, the rectangular cross session is, uh, is used for the analysis. Okay, and the material fit between the two rollers that is called working roller. So here we have two uh, working roller here. These are the two working roller and which is rotating in the opposite direction. So here which is rotating in the opposite direction. The gap between the two roller is less than the thickness of the starting material which causes deformation. Actually this gap identically if we say identically this gap H is equal to HF. This gap is equal to HF that is also equal to the thickness of the output product. Should be same identically but actually this hf is hf1 we can give hf1 this hf1 that is the gap between the raw is actually less than that of the hf the output there will be some expansion after rolling process because we have uh, heavily deformed the material by compressive force when it come out from the gap what happened there will be a slight expansion in the output product okay actually in this area the workpiece has a thickness of hf1 but after when it come out from the rolling process, there will be some minute expansion for the output product so that the thickness of output product may be higher than, than that of the uh, rolling gap. Okay. The decrease in material thickness causes the material to elongate. I already explained that there will be a reduction H0 to HF. So H0 is higher than that of HF. There will be a reduction in thickness. How this reduction in thickness is compensated? When, when the thickness is reduced, the volume to maintain constant volume, here the W, there is no variation in the W. W0 is equal to WF. There is no change in the width, the So, if you want, if there is any reduction in 
uh, thickness it is compensated with the length okay so l0 will be less than lf the final product will have higher length than that of the initial product any reduction in the thickness is compensated with the increase in length the friction at the interference between the material and the roller causes material to push through that is very important in case of rolling the friction play an important role uh, actually there is a friction between the roller and the workpiece here here we have a friction in this interference between the roller and the workpiece there is a friction but we should not eliminate the entire friction between the workpiece and the roller by means of lubrication because this friction allow the entry of the or the passage of the smooth passage of the workpiece through the rolling gear okay if there is no friction we should apply a pull no sorry push force or pull force here at the end of the uh, workpiece okay if there is no friction but the friction between the roller and the workpiece helps to the movement of the workpiece through the roll gap without any such type of pull or push we don't need to give any such type of pull or push uh, on the workpiece for the movement of the workpiece through the roll gap okay the friction between the roller and the workpiece helps to helps the forward motion of the workpiece without any external push and pull on the workpiece so the friction is essential but uh, very huge amount of friction may uh, form uh, such uh, different uh, defects on the workpiece so we should maintain an optimum friction between the workpiece and the uh, roller for the better high quality rolled product okay so here in this uh, uh, <coughs> so here in this problem uh, in this analysis here we uh, entering this is my workpiece uh, here i am removing the top roller here the top roller is actually there this is the bottom roller this one is the bottom roller okay here similarly we have a top roller for the better presentation uh, in this picture it is removed the top roller is removed and here this is the workpiece the deformation of the workpiece uh, actually shown here here initially it has a uh, thickness of a zero after deformation this is the area of deformation this is the area of deformation after de deformation we can see the final thickness of the um, product is hf hf so that hf is less than h0 hf is less than s0 the initial work piece um, width is w0 okay and final work piece width is wf and this initial work piece w0 and wf are equal because this friction between the roller and the work piece will not allow any lateral ex uh, expansion in the width direction okay so that the width will not change w0 equal to wf and the initial work piece has a length of the l0 okay and the final work piece um, final product has a length of w uh, lf so that the lf is greater than l0 okay that we studied next uh, we consider the volume volume rate of rate of volume consistency okay we we know there is no change in volume of the material that is one of the assumptions we taken for this analysis so there is no change in the volume during the rolling process so we can say uh, in in a better time we can say the volume flow rate instead of volume i can uh, it is better time is volume flow rate that means at a particular point on the workpiece during the deformation with respect to time at any uh, with respect to time at any point the volume will be same okay that is the volume flow rate so the volume flow rate will be same during the deformation process because there is no material removal in during the uh, deformation process or during the rolling process so the volume flow rate will be same okay so what is the equation for the volume flow rate uh, we know the equation for the volume volume is equal to nothing but H, uh, for the initial work piece it is equal to h0 w0 l0 that is the volume okay here in this 
instead of uh, this uh, we give volume flow rate volume flow rate is equal to h0 into v0 into w0 okay h0 into v0 into w0 so instead of l0 we give v0 okay v0 so that is the volume flow rate of the initial work piece initial work piece h0 into w0 into v0 what is volume um, velocity v0 means velocity 0 uh, and the, that is the velocity of the initial work piece velocity of the initial work piece okay so v0 nothing but uh, what is the unit of velocity that is the distance by time okay velocity is equal to distance by time so that is actually this v0 equal to l0 by time L0 by time. So we can say the volume flow rate. Volume flow rate. Uh, I give uh, volume flow rate. That is equal to H0 into W0 into V0. We can write like this. H0 into W0 into L0 by time. That is the volume per time. Okay. So instead of L0 by T, we give V0. That is the volume flow rate. Okay. So this is the volume flow rate of initial work piece. That is equal to H0 into w0 into velocity velocity uh, i give small letter v v0 similarly for the final product also we have a volume flow rate that is equal to hf into wf into vf that is a um, uh, vf is the volume flow rate of the output product I mean, and the, um, the material coming out from the rolling process okay we can see the volume flow rate will be equal if you take any point on the workpiece during the rolling process, okay, at any point, the volume flow with respect to time will be same. Since the volume is same, so the volume flow rate will be also same. So we can say H0, W0, V0 equal to HF, WF, VF. Here in this, we have an assumption, this w0 equal to wf w0 equal to wf because the width is not changed width is not changed so we can say or we can cut this to w0 and wf so we got h0 by v0 equal to hf into vf hf into vf okay so from this we got h0 by hf equal to H0 by HF is equal to VF by V0. VF by V0. H0 by HF is equal to VF by V0. Okay. So, here in this, what is the value of H0 by HF? Is it greater than 1 or less than 1? H0 by HF. Hmm? H0 by HF. Is it greater than 1 or less than 1? Greater than one. It is greater than one because during the um, rolling process we reduce the thickness. So H zero will be higher. Then we reduce into smaller value HF. So H zero will be higher than that of HF. So it is always greater than one. So we can say H zero by HF is greater than one. Then we can say VF by V zero also greater than one. Sorry, VF by V zero also will be greater than one. Okay. So we can say VF by V zero is greater than 1 means vf is greater than v0 okay vf is greater than v0 that means what is the meaning of that there is a velocity distribution during the rolling process the velocity of the workpiece flowing through the gap of, uh, between the rollers is not constant it is not in a constant material flow okay there is a velocity distribution for the initial work piece, for the initial work piece, it has a velocity of V0. It has a velocity of V0 for the initial work piece. And for the final product, it has a velocity of Vf. It's not constant. V0 is not equal to Vf. There is a variation in velocity. And what is the variation? It is decreasing or increasing. Is it decreasing or increasing? Increasing. Okay. Increasing. increasing. Yes, it is increasing because here using in this derivation we prove that Vf is greater than V0. 
the final um, um, the velocity of the uh, or the uh, material which is coming out from the rolling gap has higher velocity than that of the material which is entering into the rolling gap okay so that means there is a velocity increase when the material is flowing here we can see when the material is flowing in this direction if we plot a velocity graph here see this is velocity there will be a increase in velocity the material initially from zero velocity there will be an increase in velocity when material is flowing through the rolling gap there will be an increasing velocity okay is it clear okay so this v0 and vf so when material is flowing from this point to this point that is from xx to yy when the material is flowing then the velocity will increase velocity increase from v0 to vf okay at xx its velocity is v0 but when it coming out from the rolling gap that is at yy at yy its velocity is vf which has a higher value than that of v0 okay so this is actually uh, here this h0 is greater than hf so here w0 and wf we can cut both so here h0 is greater than hf then free from we get v0 is less than vf okay so the velocity of the sheet must steadily increase from entrance to exits such that vertical element in the sheet remains undistorted okay there is no change in the uh, shape of the sheet so uh, by this velocity distribution any doubt in this we take here we are not taking volume it is volume rate that means volume per time volume per time so here volume is equal to v0 into uh, sorry w h0 into w0 into l0 volume per time this is but here l0 by t we take volume sorry velocity velocity zero okay that is this equation any doubt is it okay hmm? yes sir it's clear okay fine so see this here in this is the very important figure in this figure this is the entrance point to the rolling gap and this is the exit point from the rolling gap this is the exit point here the raw material with the velocity v0 is entering we can give the letter xx this is xx crossing the section xx that is the entrance of the rolling gap here we can see the velocity is equal to zero or very small velocity okay v0 that is the velocity then when the material is passing through the rolling gap what happened its velocity is increasing see this its velocity is increasing and in the yy that is the exit exit of from the rolling gap yy its velocity is increased to how much vf this is corresponding to vf this is vf so velocity is increasing rapidly from v0 to vf that is only for material the material is flowing with a constant increase of velocity from v0 to vf okay it's very important for the analysis the velocity distribution is very important for the analysis any doubt is okay okay yes, so okay. next next one is this roller we have a roller also here this is my roller this is my roller okay top roller it, uh, it is rotating with an rpm we are rotating this for example 100 rpm revolutions per minute okay rotations per minute okay so it is rotating at an rpm so when we when a roller rotating with an rpm the surface will have a velocity its surface will have a velocity the velocity at the surface of the uh, roller is equal to v okay we can we can give corresponding to rpm the surface of the roller will have a velocity that is vr that is a roller velocity we convert the rpm of the roller into surface velocity of the 
roller it is not the metal the not the material inside the um, in between the gap it is the velocity of the roller okay we convert the rpm of the roller into surface velocity that is vr okay so is it constant vr is constant or not is it constant or not vr hmm? vr is constant or not hmm? so see this assumption first assumption here see this the velocity of the roll is assumed to be constant actually there will be some variation because of the uh, play between the power transmission system uh, maybe due to sliding etc there may be some variation but we consider the law roller velocity is constant we consider roller velocity is constant okay so this roller has a velocity of vr so everywhere its velocity is vr everywhere everywhere its velocity is vr okay so see this distribution of velocity of roller this is the distribution of velocity of roller throughout the rolling process it has the same velocity that is vr okay vr is the velocity of the roller v <coughs> here the vr is constant okay roller velocity is constant so from this distribution it is very clear that it is very clear that somewhere along the rolling gap somewhere along the rolling gap we can see a point where a point where roller velocity is equal to the metal velocity the velocity of metal flow you can see see this this is the distribution of the velocity of the metal flow this is the distribution of the velocity of the roller so here in this point we can see the metal flow velocity the metal tangential flow velocity and the surface velocity of the roller are same what is the meaning of that both has same velocity means there is no sliding there actually in the remaining portions remaining portions we can see this out other than this point remaining portion in this portion and in this portion actually the there is a difference between the velocity of the roller and the velocity of the metal flow what happen if there is any relative motion between the two components i mean two members what happen hmm what happen for example see this my both hand both are uh, moving in the same direction same velocity okay same velocity it is moving but if there is this is stationary and this is moving at a particular velocity so there is a relative motion between this hand and this hand what happen if the velocity between the two components are different then there will be a sliding motion there will be a sliding motion that resulting into friction friction there will be a friction okay so that means in this area this is very important in this area see this here in this area there is a relative motion between the roller and the workpiece okay relative motion the velocity of the roller and the velocity of the uh, workpiece or uh, the metal flow through the gap is not constant there is a variation between that okay that means there is a relative motion between the roller velocity and the uh, workpiece velocity that means there is a sliding that means there is a friction between the roller and the workpiece in this area in this area there is a friction between the roller and the workpiece similarly in this area also here also we can see this is the direction of the roller velocity or the distribution of roller velocity this is the distribution of the metal flow so there is also a relative motion so in the second region this region also in this region also in this region also there is a relative motion sliding friction between the roller and metal flow metal flow a friction is there okay 
then what about this so we got this two region where friction exists but here what is the what about this point this point here we can see at that specific point the friction uh, sorry the velocity of roller is equal to the velocity of the metal flow that means is there any friction or sliding both are moving in the same direction the metal and at that point the metal and the um, uh, roller is moving with the same velocity with the same velocity is there any sliding no no there is no sliding or there is no friction so this is the corresponding point that where there is no friction and this is called no slip point or neutral point this point is called neutral point or no slip point okay so there is no friction that is called neutral point or no slip point this is very important neutral point or no slip point there is no friction or sliding between the roller and the uh, workpiece to the left of this point to the left of this neutral point the roller moves faster than workpiece and to the right of the uh, right the workpiece moves faster than the rollers see this here we can see from this distribution also we can see to the right of the um, neutral point here we can see this is a distribution of material flow that is greater than that that of the velocity of the roller so to the right of the neutral point the material flow is velocity of material flow is greater than that of, that of the roller flow roller velocity but to the left of this uh, neutral point the velocity we can see the velocity here that is less than that of the velocity of the roller then velocity of the metal flow is less than than that of the velocity of the roller motion okay so that is uh, this neutral point separating into two region this is the region where velocity of the roller is greater than that of the velocity of metal flow and this is the region where velocity of the metal flow is greater than, than that of the velocity of the roller okay so this is about neutral point this is very important for the analysis of the mechanics of flat rolling so uh, okay that is about this uh, uh, up to this lecture okay thank you